Hi, I'm Irving. You have just entered Cartertopia. Hey, Bonnie, how does Chinese food sound for lunch? Oh, I thought I'd surprise my boyfriend and take him out to lunch. You know, last night he kind of let it slip that he was working over on Connecticut Avenue. So I figured uh, that... this is the third time this week you've taken him out to lunch. What are you trying to do, bribe him with quiche Lorraine? That isn't funny, Joan. It wasn't meant to be. That's Bonnie, our guest star. Her friend thinks she may be trying just a little too hard with this guy. I'll see you later. And that's a small hint as to why she's our guest star. Cut to a guy walking out of JNR Electronics and getting into a plumbing company van. Look, do you think you're still going to be able to crack that safe without using a plastic explosive? Hmm? Well, with this little baby along, it'll be a lead pipe cinch. Uh-huh, well, just in case you can. That should create a nice little diversionary effort uh, while you blow it open. You know, I really wish we didn't have to have all these explosives around. The odds are a million to one against this going off by itself. Will you relax? Meet Bonnie's boyfriend. They have a few minutes before they go in to rob this safe, so they decide to get some coffee while they wait because the caffeine jitters are a safe cracker's best friend. You know, Mayfield's risking an awful lot of equipment on his job. I wonder what he thinks Mark! he's gonna get out of it. Mark! Who's that? Some broad I've been dating for about a month. I've been trying to dump her. She's hanging on like poison ivy. Hi, how are you? Those million to one odds, too bad you didn't put some money down on it. So much for that safe cracking job, the best thing to do now is make themselves scarce. Bonnie has no idea what's going on. Will you stop battling and keep running? Get it! Shut What are your bosses gonna say when they find out I blew up your van? What are you talking about, Bonnie? You did not cause that van to explode. No, maybe not directly, but Mark, I seem to have this talent for disasters. I mean, I'm always right in the middle when something terrible happens. Mark doesn't buy it, so she gives him several examples. His partner has heard enough. You guys should slap your jaws all day long, but I'm gonna get out of here before they find out what's inside that van. See? You see this? I am a jinx! If you really believe that and you really like Mark, maybe the best thing to do is establish a long-distance relationship. The authorities have indeed discovered what was in the van, and the IADC is studying those items right now. It's not hard to deduce what they're for. That listening device is one of several that was stolen from a government research lab about a month ago. <clears throat> Take a look at this. Now, that's rumored to be the work of William Mayfield, one of the best white-collar thieves in the business. He specializes in rare items, one of a kind, like uh, touring Inca treasures or uh, prototype weaponry, things of that nature. He's been at this for a long time, has a very good network, and he's never been caught. One of the reasons is because he's an expert statistician. He's obsessed with the law of probability. I even heard that he has a full-time research psychologist that he retains year-round. We're meeting that psychologist right now as she studies the phenomenon that is Bonnie Murphy. One of my special fields of interest, Mr. Rubin. I did graduate work in probability theory at Duke University. But I've never seen anything quite like this. The ball lands in 20 every time she throws it, no matter how fast or slow she does it. I'm glad to be a... <laughs> Or it might do that. Flipping a coin produces similar, if less dangerous, results. The doctor is spellbound. I've never seen anyone exert such influence over the odds as your friend. How does she do it? One school of thought might ascribe Bonnie's um, gift to the same unnatural forces that produce poltergeists, and still another to electrochemical brain impulses. The doctor explains that somehow she brings out the remotest possibilities in any given situation. In Miss Murphy's presence, all the lines of probability tend to converge. What does that mean? Well, it means... She's a jinx. While he's considering how he might use that to his advantage, his partner comes in. Hi, did you get in touch with uh, Mayfield? Well, sort of. We meet sort of. Well, it's more like he got in touch with us. Hi. 
He sent Dick Butkus to put a genuine NFL-level hit on both of you. Dick Butkus had retired from football a few years earlier and went into acting. He really came into his own when he teamed up with Bubba Smith because the way the two played off each other was a perfect match. They're best known for a bunch of Miller Lite commercials that are still classics today. Diana would like to know what JNR has that Mayfield wants. A microwave scrambler capable of transmitting jamming signals across a wide band width. It is conceivable that a prototype model could cut off all telephone television and radio communication within an area of 50 square miles. A wide band signal jammer could be useful in a lot of contexts and none of them seem especially positive. Why would they be developing a thing like this? The project has been subcontracted by the Pentagon for possible military use. Of course, when you're military, everything looks like either a weapon or an enemy. Maybe while the Pentagon was subcontracting this project, they could have sent along more security to protect against guys like Mayfield. Speaking of Mayfield, it's time to meet him. The doctor has just reported her findings about Bonnie and says, this is for real. Well, thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, it seems your girlfriend's a jinx after all. Oh, well, not professionally. She just dabbles, you know. I'm beginning to suspect that Mark isn't as brilliant as he gives himself credit for. Don't be smug, Mr. Rubin. If I did not have utter faith in Dr. Curran's judgment, I can assure you, you'd be fertilizing the continental shelf. You don't fertilize stuff at the bottom of the... Never mind. What you mean is he'd be crab poop by now. What does this have to do with the recovery of $50,000 worth of stolen property? It doesn't. It replaces $50,000 worth of stolen property. You see, Bonnie is the perfect diversionary weapon. Whenever she becomes nervous or upset, everything around her goes haywire. You can imagine how easy it would be to rob a building if, say, there was a 10-car collision outside. And not just on this job. You could use her again and again as long as Mark is willing to pretend to be her boyfriend who cares anything about her. The big question will be how long he can keep that up. Mayfield is intrigued enough to let him try it. Mark, um... I don't understand any of this. You drag me out of work. You make me drive all the way back here to... Li Mark, you're listening to me? Mark, you're making me very nervous. Whatever you do, don't be nervous. Do you understand me now? Don't be nervous. <sighs> Which, of course, is designed to make her even more nervous, as we know. We've all done it. Tell someone not to laugh. Keep telling them not to laugh. It works just about every time. And it's the same telling someone like Bonnie not to be nervous. With what she knows about herself, she's always nervous. The only question is how bad. Mark, are you in trouble with the plumbing company because I blew up your van? Bonnie, I don't work for that company. I work for the IADC. I think I spotted some enemy agents over there. Yeah. Don't look. Smile. I'm going to go over and check it out. If anything should happen, just don't be nervous. Well, Mark! Guaranteed to send her anxiety into orbit. And it works. <laughs> Mark has his diversion. Fortunately, Diana was just arriving to examine the prototype. While she's rescuing the driver of the burning car, Mark's friends drive up, dress the security guards, and evacuate JNR Electronics. Mark hides in their car, while Wonder Woman uses a nearby fire hydrant to put out the fire and Bonnie stands there calling for Mark over and over. These two guys waltz in and casually steal the prototype scrambler. Mark, where, where are you? Three days later, she was still at it. She finally collapsed from exhaustion and was taken to a hospital where doctors couldn't explain why her EKG was running backwards. The question is now, does Mayfield sell the device to the black market or does he use it to go after bigger game? And if so, what? Ira's been working on that and he's come up with about a dozen possible targets that fit Mayfield's pattern, the most likely of which is the Declaration of Independence. Eat your heart out, Nicolas Cage. And what does Mayfield do with all this stuff? They haven't said anything about selling it, so is he just the world's most selfish collector? 
While they're discussing that, Bonnie has come in looking for Mark. She refuses to believe that he isn't really an IADC agent. Oh, uh, uh, something wrong, Karen? Oh, no, Miss Prince. This young woman is just looking for a friend. His name is Mark, right? Yes, you know him. Mark Rubin. Well, no, but I think that you and I ought to have a little talk. Maybe she'll believe another actual agent. Miss Murphy, let's get one thing clear. I was the only IADC agent at that building today. You and Mark. Or not. I am afraid that your boyfriend was lying to you when he told you that he worked for the IADC. Now, it wouldn't be the first time that someone, you know, tried to impress his girlfriend by telling her something like that. Guys like that have lied to get what they want from a woman since the invention of language. That may be why we invented language, so we could lie to women and get into their fig leaves. You've got your nerve. Mark would never lie to me. I'm sure of it. I've known him for almost a month. I know you're upset. Upset? No, I'm not upset. Why should I be upset? Just because the only guy who's ever looked sideways at me just suddenly disappears and nobody will tell me where he is? And now we know why she refuses to accept the truth. And then you come along and you tell me that he's lying to me. Yeah, Is I that know. it? I know you're worried. Don't patronize me, Miss Prince. I am not stupid. I'm not so sure about that. Thank you for all your help, Miss Prince. <laughs> Miss Murphy! By the way, there's a little something she forgot to tell you in all her frazzledness. Bonnie! He's still playing the government angle, and she's still buying it. I went looking for you at the IADC. What? Well, they wouldn't tell me anything. They wouldn't even admit that they knew you. This Prince treated me like I just fell off a turnip truck or something. Uh, Prince, Prince, I... Diana said... Prince. Oh, Diana, yes, of course. Good woman, good woman. She has no idea what he just did. But she, uh... You have to understand, Bonnie. She couldn't really be sure that you knew me. I figured it was something like that. He arranges a nice trip with a picnic lunch for the next day, which just happens to coincide with the time and place of Mayfield's next move. Now, if she can prove useful in tomorrow's operation, well, then she will have more than paid her way, so to speak. But alas, thereafter, for safety's sake, we will have to surrender her to Neil's tender mercies. You have no objections, of course. Uh, uh, um, no. Neil, or Dick Butkus as we know him, is not a nice person. And Mark does have an objection, but he's not going to say it out loud. Mark also mentions that Bonnie talked to Diana Prince, so Mayfield is going to send Neil after her, too. Neil isn't very good at this. Looking for someone? In fact, Neil is terrible at this. What's Mayfield's current plan? We don't know yet. We get it in bits and pieces. He's going to seal something being shipped from Virginia to Washington tomorrow. That's all I know. Some kind of weapon. He also explains that Bonnie is a jinx and they're using her to create diversions and such. Steve finds it hard to believe, but what's important is Mayfield believes it. This is the device that we'll be after tomorrow. It's a, a prototype model of an electrical disruptor that can project an electric magnetic field that is capable of short-circuiting any machine, whether it's an automobile engine or all the way to an electrical power plant. And he does indeed plan to use it on a power plant. Once he has it, he'll hit the main power generator for Washington, D.C. and black out the whole city. While that's happening, the National Archives just happens to be relocating the country's founding documents. Every year, someone examines the documents for damage and deterioration, and it's that time. Once the city is in darkness and the authorities have their hands full with the populace, he and his gang will move into the document depository and neutralize the few Marines that remain. And my friends, the depository and its entire contents of American historical documents will be mine! I repeat, what do you intend to do with them? Do you have the facilities to keep them preserved the way the National Archives does? Why do you want them? 
you get the feeling it's an ego trip for him. I have this unique thing and nobody else can look at it. That makes me extra special. And as with so many such people, it's never enough. After the Declaration of Independence, it'll be something else. Dude, get therapy. It's a lot cheaper and easier to obtain. They're leaving now, Steve. I'm following. Yeah, we got you, Di. All right, uh, we'll pick up their trail right after they leave the city. After a while, Mark sees that the same car has been behind him for a while. I'm turning off now, Steve. He's all yours. Thanks, Diana. We've got another car coming. As soon as they make their move, we're going to close in. Let's go. Gone now. I guess we're both just a little jumping. Maybe. If Mark was a real agent, he'd know about that tactic and keep watching. But he isn't, so he isn't. Neil and Bob have been waiting for Mark to go by, and now they're hopping in to follow him. Now, this is Trevor. They just picked up another tail. Must be one of their accomplices. I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to lay back a little, give them a chance to pull off their hijack before we move in. Why? Just because there's four of them and one of you and one of them can set your pants on fire with their mind? <laughs> It looks like a typical boxing in maneuver, but that's not what they're doing. Oh my lord, Mark, I think there's been some kind of accident. Don't you touch that. I'm not sure what Mark is doing with Bonnie, but Bob is making the guards do push-ups. Hot what, what are you doing? Well, they look kind of stupid standing there with their hands up. Are so you I out of your mind, mind Well, when what? I was in the Army, these kind of guys made me do push-ups. So I thought I could get back now and have them do some push-ups. Yeah, push well, we're here for something me? else. He's getting push-up revenge for his own time in the Army. First, these guys weren't the ones who did that to you. Second, you think they don't look silly doing push-ups at gunpoint on the side of a busy road? We heard some tires screeching. We thought that we'd come down and see. All right, hold it right there. Stand behind me, Bonnie. Well, uh, Mark, no wonder things have been going well for you lately. That's your friend Bob. Now, knock off the conversation. If you two keep your mouths shut, you might just live to see another sunset. You won't get away with this, Bob. The IADC doesn't forget traitors. He's really playing this to the hilt. He'd better be good at it, because here comes the real IADC. Right there, drop your weapon. Except he's convinced Bonnie that these are agents from the other side, so she's terrified. I'm sorry I got you into this, because now we're both going to die, and I'll never have a chance to tell you how much you mean to me. And he's not above using her terror. Even so, I'm not sure why Steve did that. Bob didn't do anything while he looked away, so Steve was still in control of the scene. I guess he thought otherwise. We get a chaotic fight scene where it's sometimes hard to tell who is which. Diana has been watching from a hillside, and it's time to transform and go clean up this mess. <laughs> One more move and she buys the farm. All right, Bonnie, ask yourself, would a real IADC agent do this? Would a real IADC agent be fighting Wonder Woman? Think about it. Mark, I thought we were on the right side. Shut up. All right, we're going to the truck. Neil! Pop! He tells Wonder Woman, I know you can catch up to us. Do so and she's dead. <sighs> well, if this little sucker doesn't get us back in Mayfield's good side, I don't know what will. Yeah, you wouldn't think something this small could black out an entire city, would you? Well, size doesn't mean anything in electronics. What are you looking at? I think he's forgotten something important. Rotten, no good lines! Oh, 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 oh. She can jinx him, too. They have what they want, so there's no need to go after her. 
I wonder what Mayfield will think of that since Neil was supposed to kill her. But that's their problem. She heads straight to the IADC but can't remember much that might be helpful. Steve was more interested in her and her little gift. It's nothing I control. I do something weird with the odds. Bonnie, the odds can work both ways, good or bad. Maybe if you felt a little better about your life. No. No, it's no, it's no use. I'm a jinx. Maybe part of the reason it's not getting any better is because you're listening to the wrong people. Come on, Bonnie, cut it out. You must too pretty of a girl to go through life playing cat's cradle with your fingers. You mean that? Yes, I do. Steve, I just talked to the police and there's still no sign. Uh, I can come back later. Good idea. Well, it's getting late, Diana. I'll hold down the fort. Why don't you go on home before it gets too dark? Well, I think that's a good idea. Uh, dark, dark, that's it. What's oh, it? What? In the truck. They were moving that disruptor thing, and Mark's friend said something about it's awfully small to black out an entire city. It's not hard to put it together from there. Steve will send some extra security to the depository. What about the power plant? Diana, maybe we ought to... Mayfield's men are already there, and Diana, in a slightly different form, should be about halfway there by now herself. We watch the city go dark while the disruptor glows and makes the generator shoot sparks and rude noises. Steve can't contact anybody, so he'll have to round up some agents here in the building and head over to the depository. Steve, let me come with you. Bonnie, I can't let you do that. Why not? Because you're a civilian and there's a good chance you'd get hurt. It's standard operating procedure. You afraid I'll jinx you? <sighs> you win. Come on. I suppose the alternative was leaving her alone in his office with nothing but emergency lights and her own imagination. There's no telling what condition the place might be in when you get back. The power is out, so it's time for Mark's team to make their move. <laughs> Wonder Woman arrives at the power plant. There's no security at all in this place. Anybody can walk in and go anywhere they want unchallenged, even when they're carrying a big laser gun type thing or dressed like an American flag. The city might want to address that. Oops, you broke it. Steve and his team arrive at the depository. Mark, the light. Yeah, what about They're back on. Right. Oh, terrific. Terrific. By the time I get this open, everybody and the brother will be in here. Come on, let's get out of here. What about the documents? Mayfield. Okay. Mayfield can stick the documents up his nose. I'm not about to get caught in here with a bunch of trigger-happy Marines. Come on. Too late, Mark. Freeze! IADC. let anything happen to me. Does he really think she... I may have been mistaken thinking he was the smart one of this gang. No, of course not. Bonnie! I wanted to do it myself. Looks like Bonnie found herself. Mayfield is in his office packing up his private collection, and Mark is going to tell Wonder Woman where that is. Right there. Oops, you broke it. Any more toys? Get it out of your system now because you won't have another chance for a while. You know, you're a very unique sort of thief, Mr. Mayfield. I think people ought to get a chance to see what uh, kind of a man would black out an entire city to satisfy his own personal obsession. How about if we run a tour through here once or twice a week? Would you like that? That ought to keep you? You'll be safe here. He does collect unique items, so it only makes sense that he's part of his own collection. At least until the police get there, then he's part of their collection. Bonnie is feeling better about herself and her life, so maybe her little magnetic field or whatever it is will start doing good things, too. Like making Mark's gun misfire. Well, I don't know about you two, but I am starving. Anybody interested in finding an all-night steakhouse? 
Well, thanks, but no thanks. I'm going home and sleep until noon. How about you, Bonnie? Want to have a late dinner with me? Oh, I'd love to. Diana says no, Bonnie says yes. Exactly what he hoped for. Take care, Bonnie. And I've got a feeling that your luck is definitely taking a turn for the better. Steve's hoping to get lucky, too. Well, keep working on it. He'd better wear a helmet if he does. I'm Irving, and you are now exiting Cartertopia.